Hey church, I'm sitting here with Pastor Dave and Lee behind the camera. Earlier in the week, we were sitting in a brown in the office talking about Pastor Dirk's sermon on Sunday and this whole idea of spiritual warfare and what the different pieces of the spiritual armor all, and we got into a good conversation about that. And so we thought we'd just take a few minutes and sort of have a conversation on video as an encouragement to you and just to spur your thinking on this week as you follow Christ. I want to look specifically at verse 10, but first, Dave, was there anything about the message that you really hit home with here? Well, uh, well I think anytime you mention, you know, like when you mentioned the armor of God, um, we're in difficult times. And when you think of armor as a means of protection, I think Dirk did a really good job of helping us think about the armor as not a theoretical thing, but a practical thing that, that we put. I think of like the belt of truth, you know, and how we want to wrap ourselves in the truth of God's word. And that's one reason why we're doing what we're doing here today, you know, because we want to keep God's truth in mind as we walk through our daily life to help and guide us. So I wanted to key in on verse 10. I, I read out of the English Standard Version and verse 10 says, finally, in other words, based on everything I've told you, the incredible salvation I described, Paul said in chapters one, two, and three, the incredible relationships and sanctification that take place because of salvation, chapters four, five, and six, he sort of finishes finally. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Sounds almost repetitive, doesn't it? <laughs> so be strong in the Lord. Yeah, what comes to mind? Well, he said be strong in the Lord. He didn't say be strong yourself. That's what, that's what yeah. comes to mind. And that reflects back to, to what I was, I, I tried to talk a little bit about two Sundays ago. You know, um, that we can, I use the word desperate a lot in my sermon. And, uh, you know, we're weak. And so we're desperate for God's strength. And so if we're strong in the Lord, then we're making an effort. We realize, first of all, we're weak. Yeah. And the strength that we have in our life is going, to be, is, is going to come from Him. And the closer we can be to Him, then, then the stronger we'll be in our faith. So Paul is talking to the church. So be strong in the Lord. He's saying to Christians, you need to be strong in the Lord. Not necessarily salvation, although salvation's occurred. It's more this whole idea of, as you walk in the Lord, sanctified in the Lord, you are depending on His strength. And I'm thinking sometimes, what does that look like? Yeah. You know, am I strong in the Lord when temptation comes? Am I strong in the Lord when opportune moments come? What does it look like as I move throughout the day? Yeah, what's our, what, what's, what's our reaction when something happens that we didn't expect it yeah. to happen? You know, where do we, where do we turn first? Yeah. You know, do we turn first to fear and worry? Or, 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 or do we run to God with expectant hope and, ex, and expectant courage and expectant you know, faith in Him? Yeah, we were just talking yeah. about um, the idea that we talk so often in church about not being afraid, but maybe we need to think a little bit about fear is not, uh, is not a paralyzer, but it's an encouragement to have faith. Mm -hmm. And being strong in the Lord means it's not that I'm not afraid it doesn't mean that I'm not in a risky situation but I'm going to step out in the Lord in faith in the Lord anyway yeah I, I hope this is going in the right direction but I've often told people I said you know when you look over your shoulder you will not see any time when God has failed you when you look over your, if, if you're trusting in the Lord you look over your shoulder you see he, he had a plan yeah. in all this one of my life goals has always been to not have to rely on looking over my shoulder and seeing God's faithfulness. I will, but looking ahead with confidence and with faith yeah. and with, with spiritual courage for, what, for, for being strong in the Lord in the moment, at the time, you know, right now, when I'm facing whatever it is that I'm facing right now, it's a sign of maturity, I think. In our well, world. I think one of the challenges of that is we often, I think theologically, God will not fail me. And I want to say God will not fail, period. And sometimes I, I fall into this temptation to think God will not fail me, meaning it's going to go my way, mm -hmm. whatever I define as my way, mm -hmm. instead of sort of what you're describing. God will not fail. He will not fail. It might not be the way I envisioned it, yeah. but that doesn't mean God did anything wrong or God did not fail. Right. It doesn't even mean I didn't fail. It just means it didn't go maybe the way I expected. Right. And the whole category, then the whole subject of submission. Yeah. Comes in and accepting yeah. what God's will, what God's will is. Yeah. You know? 
So you talked a couple of weeks ago about being desperate for God and this idea of being strong in the Lord, I think, speaks a lot to the concept of submission. Mm -hmm. It is, like you said, it's strong in Him, not in my own strength, not in my own wisdom, not that we don't have wisdom, not that we don't have strength, but how do those connect? How desperation, boy, that's not a term we use a it's lot. It's not a term we, <laughs> and it's not a term we look favorably on. Yeah. It's not a word we like to use very often. Indeed. Oh, I'm desperate yeah. for this, you know? So you talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Sort of connect those thoughts for me of desperate in the Lord, in the Lord for spiritual battle. The, how are those connecting? Well, I think if we're going to be, when I, when I was presenting it, and, when I, and as, I, as I think about it, um, I better be desperate for God because I realize that I'm not equipped in and of myself, and I need him every single minute, every single second of every single day to be ready f for whatever I'm going to encounter every day. I want to be found faithful to him um, at, at, every, at every moment. And so I want to live a life where, I, where it's not just when I face really rough, really tough times, but I want to live a life where I'm saying, God, I really need you at every single moment of every single day. You know, the song, Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. That kind of brings that out in, in, in whenever, whenever I'm singing that song. I don't know if that's exactly it. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, you know I don't sing, so I, I'll take your word on that. <laughs> <laughs> so the passage says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. So we've alluded to this idea that our strength is in his power. It's in who he is and what he's done. And when I read that, my mind jumped back to the beginning of Ephesians in chapter 1, uh, verse 19. Let me see if I can find it real quick. And it says, Paul says, What is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe? So he's sort of answering, where, what is his power? According to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. So this power of God is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. That's power. But it's also this idea of power that can seat him in a place of authority. Right. And so when I read, finally be strong in the Lord in the strength of his might, it's the might of the resurrection power that has authority to raise Christ and to give him all authority. So, so when he's saying, you be strong in that, what is he, what is, what is he saying? Yeah, it's, what, that's a great it? question. It's a, it's a, it comes back to submission, I think, because the power is available to us. Mm -hmm. Remember, the idea of sanctification is God imputing his righteousness to us. It's not that we have any righteousness. He gives it to us, his righteousness, which includes his power. So God has given it to us in Christ, in salvation. Right. And now we align our actions, minds, thoughts, behaviors with what is already true. Right. And I think when we do that, we experience that power as doing those things you're talking right. about. As we move through the day, as God gives us right. moments to make a difference for him. Sometimes it's just doing the routine yeah. things. Right. And be, str be strong in your confidence. Be strong yeah. in your hope. Be strong in your faith. Don't be weak. Don't doubt. Be strong you know, in how you're looking at this whole issue of a relationship with yeah. God. You know, he's accomplished it. You can be strong yeah. in that because he's accomplished yeah. it. You don't have to accomplish it. You, just, you, you need to be strong in your confidence and your faith yes. and your dependence, if I can go back, your desperation for him. Yeah, and it's embracing that. Embracing is true. it's good word. Yeah, we embrace the reality that that is true, yeah. and then we step out and do it and yeah. and faith. And the more you embrace it, the more you experience it yeah. that it's real in your life. Yeah. It's not a pipe dream. Yeah, I, I read this analogy some time ago. So often we try and run our life like a motorboat. We get into the boat, we turn on the motor, pull the string, whatever it is, and then we take the engine and we direct where the boat goes. And Christianity is more like a sailboat. You get in the boat, you put the sail up, and you discern where the Spirit is leading you within His plan and His power, and then you follow that. Oh, that's good. Instead of trying to power it yourself, you're embracing the power of God directing yeah. you. Yeah. And that's been helpful. Wherever the Spirit, wherever yeah. the wind, wherever the, wherever the wind of the Spirit wants to yeah. guide and direct you, that's... Which, it's sort of tying it all together, desperate people can do that. Right. Although we're tempted to run the power boat. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's his power that is pushing the sails. It's his 
powerful in the, uh, filling the cells. That's good. So one of the things you noticed, uh, Church, is we, we took the text finally and wrapped it back into the context of Ephesians. This Sunday, Pastor Dwight's going to uh, talk to us about the importance of context, of not just grabbing individual images, but putting it into the greater picture. And he's going to talk to us about this Sunday. I encourage you to be here because as we read the Bible, we've got to learn to read it within context and to apply it within context. So thanks for sitting in with us. Great.